All right, good morning, everybody. Hopefully, everybody got a good night's sleep last night, ready to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Not too tough of a concept today. Welcome to Math Lesson 6. Today, we're talking about adding whole numbers. So, we have a couple of terms we have to keep track of, and they're going to ask you this in your lessons. If you don't remember, you might have to turn back into your book and take a look at the first page and all the blue words to go and remember what these are. Here it says, in addition problems, the numbers that we add are called add-ins. The numbers that we add are the add-ins. The answer to any addition problem is called the sum. Here if I had 1 plus 2 equals 3, 1 and 2 are the add-ins. 3 is the sum. And we can add add-ins in any order and it won't change the sum. This is due to a property called the commutative property of addition. If 1 plus 2 equals 3, I can just switch these add-ins around and 2 plus 1 will also equal 3. The add-ins can change but the sum will stay the same. So let's take a look here. What is the sum of 7, 4, 3, and 6? And if you're trying to do this mentally, the best approach is to figure out does anything added together make a group of 10? Well, hopefully you know 7 plus 3. Hey, that would equal 10, right? Do you have any other digits added together that could equal 10? In this case, we do. 4 plus 6 also equals 10. And if I put them into groups of 10 first, then that makes it pretty easy. I have one group of 10 with 7 plus 3, and another group of 10 with 4 plus 6. So 10 plus 10, hey, that's going to give us 20. If you go and put them in groups of 10 first, it's sometimes easier to add them all up mentally. All right, check this one out, something a little bit different. Here it's asking us, four one-digit whole numbers are added. Would the sum be greater than or less than 40? And you're probably going, how should I know, Mr. Hines? I have no idea. It doesn't actually give us any numbers here. But let's go back and think about what we know about this word digit. Do you remember the nine digits that there are? Our digits in order are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, correct? So that still really isn't helping us about trying to figure out if the sum would be greater than 40 or less than 40. But let's do a little more thinking here. If we had to go back and think about what's the single greatest digit. Well, the greatest digit I can think of is 9, right? So let's think. What if we use 9 for all four of those digits? And we had something that looked like this. 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9. There is no other digits larger than 9, so whatever this equals, you know has to be the biggest possible answer. So what is 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9? Well, hopefully you know 9 plus 9. We're just counting up by 9s. We've been practicing that for a while. That would be 36, right? So now that we know this is the biggest answer it possibly could be, you might be able to get something smaller than 36, but if you're using the four largest digits each time, there's no way it can be greater than 36. So now let's take a look. Is 36 greater than 40, or is it less than 40? And hopefully you all know that would be less than 40. So, in math, we add, subtract, multiply, and divide using algorithms. Don't get scared about how big and fancy this word sounds. 
An algorithm is just a step-by-step -step procedure for getting an answer. I'm pretty sure there's not a fifth grader in this room who doesn't know what the addition algorithm is. If they're too large to do in your head, we always set the problems up vertically. That means up and down, one number on top of another number. We line the numbers up at the right. We're going to start adding the ones, then we're going to add the groups of tens, then the hundreds, etc., etc. We're going to carry any answer greater than one digit into the next column and add that number as well. This might sound a little confusing, but we've all done it, I know. Let's take a look. Here we have $468 plus $58. Well, probably too big to try to do successfully in our head. So what did we say first is? We're going to set them up vertically, up and down. So now that I have it set up vertically, I'm going to start with the digits in the ones column. 8 plus 8. 8 plus 8. Hopefully you all know that's 16. So I got two digits. I'm going to put the 6 in the one column, and I'm going to carry that other one to the next column in the left, right? Now I'm going to add up all my 10s together. 1 plus 6 plus 5, that's going to give us 12. So I'm going to write the 2 right down below. I'm going to carry the other one into the hundreds column because 10 tens makes 100. Now I have 1 plus 4. That's going to give us 5. Last step, don't forget the dollar sign. So I end up with $526. The biggest mistake I see 5th graders make is if they're too sloppy and they don't keep their numbers lined up nice, neat, and straight. So here I have 674 plus 555. Again, even if the book is listing them out horizontally, we want to put ours vertically, up and down, lined up on the right. Let's get ready to add. 4 plus 5, hey, that's going to give us 9, right? So I'm just going to write the single digit 9 in the ones column. 7 plus 5, that equals 12. So I'm going to write down my 2 in the tens, carry my 1 because 10 tens is really 100, correct? So now I have 1 plus 6 plus 5, and that's going to give us 12. I don't have another column over to carry that number, so I can write both digits at the end. So I end up with 1,229. Check out this one, our first real story problem. Jamal had $462. Now, don't get freaked out over these names if you don't know how to pronounce it. You can just go ahead and call him the J-Man, right? What you do need to know is that J-Man Jamal here had $462. Check out the second sentence because sometimes fifth graders trip up on this. Maria paid Jamal $160 for rent. Now, is Jamal paying rent or is Jamal getting paid? Jamal's getting paid in this sentence, right? So that means he's getting more money. Sometimes kids read this and they think it's a subtraction problem. Maria paid Jamal $160 for her rent. So Jamal started off with $462. And then it says Maria paid him $160 more for rent. So I'm going to add the $160, and now I just go ahead and I do my addition algorithm. I'm lined up nice, neat, and straight on the right-hand side, and I'm going to go ahead and start adding. 2 plus 0, that should be easy enough. Hey, that's 2. 
6 plus 6, that makes 12. So I'm going to write the 2 in the tens column. And I'm going to carry over my 1 because 10 tens is really 100. Now I go 1 plus 4 plus another 1. That's going to give me $622. So don't forget to write in your dollar sign. Find each sum. Look for combination of numbers that add up to 10. I have 9 plus 6 plus 4. If you think about it, 4 plus 6 is going to equal 10. So now I think 10 plus 9 more. Hey, that's going to give us an easy one. Pretty much going to be 19, right? 9 plus 6 plus 4 equals 19. We're going to do it again, looking for combinations of numbers that equal 10. 3 plus 7, hey, that's going to equal 10, right? Do you have any other combinations? Looks to me like 6 and 4 also equal 10. So I have one group of 10, another group of 10, and then that extra 5. So 10 plus 10 plus 5, that's going to give us 25. It's a little bit easier than trying to stack all these single digit numbers up and trying to add them up that way. So that is the end. You are definitely going to want a scratch piece of paper and a pencil for the Socrative quiz, and good luck.